There was one point in the book where I actually started to tear up. So that is something that I did not expect to happen. And this is weird. Hey guys, what's up? It is Monday, December 9th, and earlier today I started reading Harry Potter for the first time. Now, it's not necessarily true that I've never read Harry Potter before. I've tried to, a couple of times, sort of. A few years ago, I took a children's literature course and Harry Potter was on the reading list and it was one of the last books in the year and it actually turned out that because of the nature of the exam and all of the other ways that we were being marked in that class, I didn't actually have to read Harry Potter. I just had to be able to recognize a couple of quotes from Harry Potter, which is pretty darn easy without even reading the books. As a student, I made the executive decision to eliminate some of my workload and not read Harry Potter. A few years after that, when I was working in the lab, my friend turned me over to the audiobooks, but I don't think I got more than maybe four or five chapters into the first book. The voice that they did for Hermione. So for the first time in my life, I finally sat down with a physical copy of Harry Potter and started reading it. I'm already loving reading it compared to listening to it or trying to read it with the pressure of class and stuff like that. So I think this is going to go well. It's not a super long book, which is awesome for me because I don't really care for long books. And I'm going to continue vlogging my experience and kind of figuring out my expectations versus reality with reading the first Harry Potter book. I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to give you guys a little update on reading Harry Potter for the first time. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. I am only on, I'm about to start chapter five. Basically what's happened so far, spoiler alert, if you haven't read it, um, Hagrid has come to collect Harry and I believe they're about to go to Diagon Alley because the fifth chapter is called Diagon Alley. And um, something that I'm finding with this actually that I didn't quite expect is, okay, so I was really afraid that reading Harry Potter, I would feel like I'm slugging through it, if that makes sense. Like I, I was worried that because I've read the movies, and read the movies, I was worried that because I've watched the movies, I would not want to read the books once I started them. Like, cause this has happened to me with other books before where I've watched the movie first. You start reading the book and then you're like, ugh, I know what's gonna happen, who cares? So I was worried that that's what was gonna happen with the Harry Potter series. But what I'm finding is I'm finding myself wanting to continue reading this because there's so much more to the books than there are to the movies. Like, yeah, you see things in the scenes that are shown to you, but you don't necessarily notice everything. So like there could be things in the movie that are being shown to you that are specifically talked about in the book, but you don't notice them because the movie is not like panning in on just that one thing. So like little details and things about scenery or like, I don't know, facial expressions that people have on and stuff like that. Like there's so many extra things that I'm getting out of reading it. And I was so hoping that that is what would happen when I picked up the book because it's making me want to keep reading it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying sitting down with it for longer periods of time, which is something I was hoping would happen and is happening. So I'm really looking forward to continuing to read this. I will be sure to update you guys on what my thoughts are as I go through Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Hey guys, update time. Still reading Harry Potter, obviously. That's what this vlog is about. I have just finished chapter five, which was the Diagon Alley chapter and something really unexpected is happening with this reading experience. So basically because I watched the movies growing up and before reading the books, which I'm reading them for the first time now at 24, um, I've been watching the movies for I think almost 20 years. That's insane. For most of my life, I've been watching the Harry Potter movies. And so when I picked up the books, I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to be taking the movies images and like the voices of the characters and stuff and putting it onto the pages of what I'm reading, right? That's what I thought would happen. And that definitely is happening. When I read about Hagrid, I see Hagrid's actor. I hear his voice as the actor portrayed him. When I read about Gringotts Bank, 
I see the goblins from the movie and I see like the marble interior from the movie and as they describe it in the book, which like also really good job so far on making the movie look the way the book describes the settings. But something I'm, I didn't expect actually happened in the scene where Harry goes to get his wand. This isn't really a spoiler. Everyone knows there's wands in Harry Potter. So he goes to the wand store, he goes to Ollivander's, and the descriptions of the wand store were very much akin to what I imagined from the movie, based on the movie's visuals. But when the author was describing Ollivander himself, I was completely drawn into the description given in the book to the point where, sure, when Ollivander walks out for the first time in the book, I'm imagining the actor who played him. But as the scene went on with him, I was completely like, my image of him completely changed to the description in the book, which is not something I expected and something that makes me so much more excited for picking up the rest of the books in the series because I want to see what my imagination does. I expected it to almost be a little bit boring because I expected what things would look like. But given the extra little tidbits of information and description that I'm getting by reading the book, I'm having such a good time. Like I, I did not expect that. And so this is making me really, really interested and excited to read the rest of the books in the series as well, because I'm like, oh, well, you know, what's it going to be like if I've got the template of the visuals of the movie and then I've got kind of the added information of the descriptions in the books, like I'm doing it backwards. And I feel like it's such a rich experience and I don't know if I had done it the other way, if I would get that or not. They're not separate things for me anymore that I have to fight over I like one more than the other. So that is something that I did not expect to happen and I am so glad is happening because it's making this reading experience so much better. It's so much fun. I just want to get it across how excited I am that this thing that I didn't expect to happen is happening. Guys, what is up? It has been a few weeks because holidays. So I did finish reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. There was a period in time there where I hadn't picked up the book for like two weeks and I was a little bit worried that I would just not finish it. And that's not because I wasn't enjoying it or anything like that. It was just the holidays being busy and like me trying to do book miss. I only got to day eight of book miss, by the way. We're just gonna ignore that that happened. We're just going to, I'm, I'm kind of proud that I even got to day eight, so. I'm just gonna focus on the proud feelings and, and move on from that. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to this video. So uh, there was a period in time where I just did not read Harry Potter for like two weeks. I think I got to like chapter seven when he was in, what, Diagon Alley, and I was super excited about that and I loved all the descriptions and I, I was talking to you guys in the last clip about that. Eventually I did pick it up, again, about like two, two and a half weeks later I picked it up and I found it was very easy to get back into and in fact I'm pretty sure that I finished the book in one sitting from that point onward, or at least in one day. So it has been a little while, it's been probably half a week, a week, I don't really know, uh, since I finished Harry Potter and so because when I finished it I knew that I wouldn't be able to sit down and film right away just because family and the house was full and all of that, um, I wrote down some notes about Harry Potter right when I finished it, just to make sure that I got my thoughts down. So so it was December 29th that I finished it. Today is January 3rd, so it's been like four or five days-ish. Um, and final thoughts, I gave Harry Potter four out of five stars. I thought it was really good, maybe even great, but not amazing. I did toy with the idea of giving it 4.5, um, but quite honestly, I feel like I could have enjoyed the reading experience just a little bit more, especially in that second half of the book. And as I said before, in some cases it was nice to get descriptions in the book that you don't necessarily pick up on when you watch the movie, but towards the second half of the book, I would say that I enjoyed the second half of the movie more than I enjoyed the second half of the book, and that I enjoyed the first half of the book as much or possibly a little bit more than the first half of the movie. So that's kind of where the strengths and weaknesses in each of those media lie with me. Now, I don't know if it's because I sat down and read the rest of the book all in one sitting and maybe like I was in a weird mood in that sitting or something, I don't know, but I just found like it in, in the second half of the book it was very apparent that I was reading 
what was considered like a middle grade book. Like it just, it felt young and compared to the movie, the second half of the movie, like the book didn't feel as serious and kind of like the climactic moment um, didn't seem super important. It seemed a little bit like rushed in a way, like all of a sudden the, the reveal is resolved and things are okay. That was the moment where I was like, yeah, this is this is a book that's made for younger audiences. Anyone can enjoy it. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying that I didn't. But uh, if anything, the last half of the book, I was just really excited to move on in the books. And I think it's probably going to take me like another two or three books before I start to feel like within the age range of the audience that the books are meant for. That's one thing that I have heard about Harry Potter is that it does grow with its audience, um, which some series, middle grade series, don't do. I've heard that Harry Potter doesn't do that, and from the movies I don't think it does that. Like, the characters grow up on screen and presumably with the audience as well, so. But I kind of feel a little bit tainted too because I'm like, at what age range in the books am I going to feel like more in my element, not like I'm reading something that's clearly younger for me. It, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next, but I'm very excited um, that books two and three are not super, super long. I feel like book four is probably where it gets a little bit darker and a little bit more adult, and hence the longer page length than that. So um, I don't know. I'm just hoping that I'm engaged all the way through. So getting back to my notes, I said that the initial enjoyment kind of wore off a bit by the end. I enjoyed second half of movie more than book, yes. Found myself wanting to get on with the other books. Okay, I covered that. This was a great book for the younger end of the intended audience. I am probably twice the age of the intended audience for this book, so I'm not super surprised that I felt a little bit old near the ending. Writing style. This was something that didn't really bother me in the beginning, but again, coming into that second half of the book, I started to realize just how simple it was and how it really wasn't anything special. Like, I think the thing that makes reading Harry Potter special is the writing is not what makes it good. It's the imagination, it's the characterization, it's, it's the parts that are imaginative and creative that make this a good book and a good book series, in my humble opinion. The writing style, maybe again, maybe it's because this is like a middle grade book and maybe the writing style will get more complex in the later books, but for this one it was just painfully simple in a way. Um, and it's really interesting and a little bit disappointing because there are definitely children's authors out there or middle grade authors out there that have a more interesting writing style. Um, so I don't think that it's necessarily just, you know, this is all that this age range can handle. I don't think that's the case. I think this is just, this is her style and I'm just hoping that it gets a little bit more stylized or sophisticated or interesting as the books go on and she gets more experience with writing. That's what I'm hoping. A little bit about characters. So I noted here characters were great. I really enjoyed the very different um, personalities that the different characters had. I thought that was done fantastically. Um, I especially really loved Hagrid and I really loved Ron in this book. I don't know why, but I just, they really were fun, interesting characters to me. So I really enjoyed them. There was one point in the book where I actually started to tear up, and this is weird because I do not emote outwardly to books. Like, very, very rarely will I cry or tear up or, you know, laugh even. Like, very rarely will I have an outward show of emotion when reading a book. And I started to tear up at the point where, um, spoiler alert, this is at the end of the book, the point where Dumbledore is giving points to Neville for his bravery and for standing up to his friends. I, I started to tear up and I think that is because in the books I actually like Neville more, at least for this book, than I do in the movies. Because in the book, like, Neville's nerves are more apparent to me. Like, and his low self-esteem came across much more strongly than it did in the movies. Like, in the movies, he just kind of seems like he's, like, bumbling and awkward and, like, he's a nervous kid. But in the book, I felt that 
low self-esteem and I felt that like he doesn't think much of himself kind of thing and so when Dumbledore did that I was just like oh little Neville I'm so I'm so happy for him yay so yeah it felt really really emotional it felt like a much bigger win when this happened with Neville in the book than it did in the movie so so that's pretty much it <laughs> Those are all the notes that I have on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. What do you guys think about this book? Like, tell me in the comments below, what was your experience when you first read this? Have you reread it since then? Um, have you not read it yet? Let me know. What do you think about my thoughts on the book? Are they similar to yours? Again, drop that comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. I'm very interested to know where I differ and where maybe we have similar thoughts. So let me know. Anyways, guys, that is it for today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to like and subscribe for future videos, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.